Hey guys, I'm SKV and you're watching SKV Plays On and welcome to another video of Dauntless. This is update 1.5.0 and Dauntless Reforged is the new update and also we'll be checking out in this video the Hunt Pass related, uh, well, rewards and I'll showcase it a little bit. Hunt Pass, we do have the Elite Track and the Free Track. For Elite Track, you need a certain amount of Platinum. Depending on your region, you will be unlocking the Elite Track. And you will be able to also, at the end of level 50 of the Hunt Pass, if you finish it within the given time, which is 60 days or so from now, for this Cold Front Hunt Pass, if you can finish up to a 50 level, you will get a total of 950 Platinum back as a reward by earning each of the levels in the hunt pass. If you're only free track, you will get only 200 platinum. If you have unlocked the elite track also, you will be getting back 950 platinum. So those of you in different regions, you already know you have different values for unlocking the elite track. Let's get into it. This is the first particular level of a reward you get once you unlock the elite track. I will be showing all elite track rewards first and then you can kind of see the free track rewards later. Now the first level we get the normal one once you unlock the elite track. This is the normal warden scout armor transmog that you'll get. It looks very detailed, very simple also, very viking like the theme is. Of course even the music behind you will uh, kind of hear the very viking like sounds. And I will be getting to this particular Aether Sparks later. Just give me a second. Let me finish with the Hunt Pass showcase. Now this is a sword that you'll get as one of the rewards. On level 4 of the Elite Track we have an emote. A fishing emote. Of course you don't get the fish. But <laughs> you do try getting it. And we have a white hair kind of a dye. Looks pretty cool. Very snow colored. Then we have a lantern transmog, looks like a saber tooth tooth and we have something like a key or looks like a key but it is a boost and this is the blue color, it has a double shade to it, dark blue and also light blue. It's not the same as the other one which might be there but uh, it looks kind of similar but a different shade of dark blue it seems like. Then we have the banner fabric design, looks nice, I like the design. And I'm also kind of biased towards the designs for the weapons this time, so I really like them. So if you kind of think that I'm telling everything is cool, well, pun is intended, of course. They do look cool, and they are made to look cool because it has a very cold, misty effect from all the weapons. You will see this. This is the hammer. Then we have the war pike at level 20 on the elite track. I do like the designs of it. Some of them kind of look similar to some of the designs in the game. Uh, at least the Warpike kind of reminded me of the Boreas Warpike. But uh, yeah. And then we have an emote at level 22 of the Elite track. Shivering, trying to get warm. Then my favorite striker skin. I do kind of wish it was a bit more thicker and a bit more bigger than it is right now. But I guess they did kind of scale it to the appropriate size. Then we have the uh, new currency type, Exploration Merits. I'll talk about that later. Then we have this War Paint or Face Paint. Uh, my hairstyle is kind of covering it up. You can't see it correctly. And we do have the Chain Blades that look like hammers from the front. But if you see towards the side, it is a very sharp edge on the blade uh, for the Chain Blades. Then we have a nice emote. you warming up in the cold. It is very... Winter themed it seems like very viking viking themed also and I do like the axe skin it looks really massive and I do like the uh, effect of the ice on this or the cold cooling effect of it like the misty effect I do like that and like I said I am kind of bit biased towards the designs and check this out this is the new northern light like uh, effect on the banner plant don't look at the banner design itself, just check out the effect around it. That's the banner plant effect it has. It has these uh, 
snow like lights going on very white and also the misty effect on it also we have the pistols that look really nice i like the engravings on it it looks nice on the barrel and again same snow or cold effect to it like as if it's freezing or frozen already then we have a face paint again which is on the elite track and again covered by my hairstyle that i've given to the character the new hunter rival from the 45th level i kind of like this uh with the shield sliding and all i wish we could have an emote but uh yeah it's a hunt arrival and there's a new hairstyle also it looks pretty kind of simple i kind of like it but i don't think i'll be using it for my character i don't know uh but then at level 50 of the le track you get a full warden defender outfit transmog that makes you look like a knight and viking in one Oh, look at the ice crystals on the boots and arms. Oh, also you should know, Free Track has a helmet, but this one's a broken horn on one side. But the Ellie Track has full horns. And also you get at level 40 on the Free Track a uh, chest piece, armor transmog. This one has a left shoulder plate with a broken horn. Whereas the level eight, uh, level 50 elite track doesn't have horns broken. Now coming to the free track, this should be quick. Ace chips on level 1 reward. Level 5 you get ice cube looking emoji. Level 10 you get a banner sigil, a crown. Level 15 you get the boost for patrol key or a patrol key that opens up some lost treasure. I don't know. I have to figure it out. Then... Uh, Level 20, 50 Platinum. Level 25, Aether Sparks. This is part of the update. And the new Reforge, the Dauntless Reforge uh, changes that they've made. I'll get to that quickly. Level 30, we have the particular Crown Flare. This one looks really cool. I like that green effect also around it. Now that's a very Northern Light kind of an effect, which they've included. And we have an emoji. I don't know why this one, but... I don't know, they'll probably have some reason to it. Then again, 50 at level 35, 50 platinum. Then level 50, you get that uh, one chest piece with the broken horn on the shoulder plate. And we have an emote, slip and slide emote, which is pretty cool. And bam. I think that ice also kind of spawns right under your feet. Then we have another 50 platinum. And another 50 on uh, 49th level. And the helmet, like I said, at level 50. So that's the hunt pass and again for those of you who are wondering elite track if you unlock it with the platinum you get a total of 750 from the elite track and a total of 200 from the tree uh, free track and both of these add up to a 950 total towards the end of the hunt pass at level 50 so if you're spending any amount of elite track related platinum you will be getting back platinum also or you might be getting back more towards level 50. That was the cold front hunt pass showcase. Hopefully you guys liked that. Now getting to the particular explanation as to what I have been understanding from this uh, particular update and I'll try to keep it as simple as possible. Hopefully I'll be able to explain it correctly but yeah there are quite a few changes to the hunting grounds. There's also something called as the slayer path which is introduced into the game and I will be showing you a few new things in the well we'll get to that quickly first things first when you get into Ramsgate you already see a lot of snow everywhere you should also know there's a new device in Ramsgate this will be required for those of you who have already gotten certain levels on your weapons I'll get to that but this is called a reforged device this can only be unlocked if you have progressed in your slayer path slayer path is what i'll be starting off with right now slayer path is your new progression method of kind of ranking up your weapons unlocking skills unlocking passives unlocking buffs unlocking islands even and also unlocking escalation modes quite a few things you get to unlock but one thing you need to know this slayer path is made up of two paths one is the main path which is made up of 12 milestones the center line you see with the big nodes that is your main path 
and to the left and right of it are the side paths also that are branching out from the main node. You obviously understand if you reach a particular node or milestone on the main path, you will be able to unlock all the other branches connected to it. So now I'm going to show you what these paths will actually let you unlock. First things first, at a very beginning stage, you will be able to unlock few islands that are required for new players to progress. More islands on the second level. Along with the second level, you unlock your blacksmith who will kind of increase your passive uh, skills to that weapon type specifically. If you're using a sword and you've unlocked this particular line connected to the sword, after reaching milestone two, you will be adding these passives such as plus five power with a sword if you've equipped a sword. And you will also have 1% extra crit chance with the sword. And if you go and upgrade a bit more higher level, you'll get another 1% crit chance to the sword. So you'll be adding extra perks at the very beginning. It's not a considerable amount of power and crit chance, but it is very useful as a new player. So you better kind of work on unlocking things at the very uh, beginning stages. That's what I feel like. Then now coming to how much does it cost and what does it need to be able to unlock these things. For unlocking these things in the side path, you need something called as merits and rams. Merits are a new type of currency. I'll get to that. But rams are something uh, which you can relate to as gold coins. You already know whenever you log into the game, for those of you who do log in every day, you know that you can go to the login reward over here near this fountain. You throw in a gold coin. This one doesn't actually spend your gold coins, but it's just an animation. But these gold coins are nothing but your gold rams, which will be earned from doing hunts, bounties, and you can also earn gold rams by doing quests in the game. For new players, you'll have a lot of quests to complete and it'll help you progress in your story and understand what you're kind of playing towards. I just now reached level 2 of my hunt pass and I just now got Aether Sparks. Now I'll get to what Aether Sparks are. It's kind of related to that device I just now showed you, which is the Reforge device over here. I'll get to that quickly, but we were talking about these passives and also the nodes on the main path. The main path has 12 nodes, like I said. For me, everything is unlocked because I've been playing the game for a long time and the devs have compensated for whatever effort I've put in the previous version of the game. Similarly, you do get, those of you who have finished ranking up your weapons and uh, armor to a plus 10 or plus 15 and above, plus 15 was the max, you will be getting that many amount of Aether Hearts. Now, now, coming back to this, pretty much basically what you need to know is this is your new progression tree. As and how you kind of progress in the nodes, you will be unlocking other side paths which will give you passive abilities for your weapons that you have to unlock by earning merits. There are two types of merits. One is your combat merit. The other one is your exploration merit, which will be uh, used for certain things. For me, I already used it on the glider once. I've already ranked it up. But here you can see exploration merit needed for your grenade types. And also here you can see exploration merit needed for your pylons and tonics and potions. Now, uh, basically the idea is the main path will kind of let you unlock the side paths, but you have to reach each of the milestone one by one. That's when you'll be able to get better upgrades for your passive. As you can see, 2% gain on the weapon charge rate. Here you can get 2% another weapon charge rate, more weapon charge rate. But this one depends on how much you rank up your weapon. So coming to weapons, weapons are not going to be upgraded the way you used to know how to upgrade it. They've changed it uh, very well, literally completely changed. So what you need to know is you have weapon types, which is sword, axe, chain blades, hammer, etc, etc, right? Meaning if I'm using a sword now, doesn't matter which sword I'm using, 
I'll fight a behemoth. I kill the behemoth. And after I kill the behemoth, the behemoth gives me a good amount of XP. Let's say 100 XP. That 100 XP is going to get added to this little bar at the bottom. You can see that. It'll get added to that bottom bar. And it'll also give you a level up on your weapon type. As you can see, one of my weapons, which is the hammer, is at level 1. Axe is at level 1. My sword is at level 2, but the others are at level 20. You see that background design for the sword, that hexagon or whatever, or whatever this is, a pentagon or a hexagon. Yeah, it's a hexagon. So this hexagon is completely colorless. This one is brown in color. This one's brown, this one's brown, and it is denoted by level 1. As you can see here, this pink color 1 denotes how many times you've reforged the weapon. To reforge a weapon, you need to go from level 1 to level 20 of that weapon type. If it's a sword, you need to fight a lot of behemoths and get that much amount of XP for that weapon type. Doesn't matter if you kind of change the sword from an umbral to an ice sword. I don't care. You can change the sword from an ice sword to a fire sword, fire to an umbral. Doesn't matter which sword you used, but because you're using a sword, you'll get only the XP for the sword if you're using that weapon type. If you use an axe, for example, you can see at the bottom, the bar is half filled up and it says 260 out of 500. If I equip an axe, for example, if I equip an axe, you can see at the bottom it says 0 out of 350, which means I have not done a hunt with the axe, so I do not get points to level up my axe. And to be able to reforge, you need to get your axe level or any weapon level from 1 all the way to 20. Once it's at 20, this is what is going to happen. You can see my repeaters are at level 20. You need something called as Aether Sparks. These Aether Sparks can be got by doing bounties, by completing bounty token challenges. You can do quests and get rewards. You can do a lot of hunts that give you rewards uh, for these Aether Sparks. And you need a hundred Aether Sparks to be able to reforge a level 20 weapon. This here a specific weapon like this doesn't count. They don't have the levels. The mastery, although, is what you're trying to reforge. If you're a sword user, you have to keep playing with the sword and keep getting XP for the sword. And once you reach level 20 of the sword, doesn't matter which type of sword you're using, but as long as it's a sword, you will be able to reforge that once it's at level 20. Right now I'm going to show you a gameplay how I get the rank up and by doing this you will be able to get to level 20 of the weapon and then you need to come to this particular device and you should have a hundred Aether Sparks. As long as you have a hundred Aether Sparks you will be able to select one of the weapon type at level 20 then you kind of reforge it. Reforging a weapon will kind of send that weapon type back to level 1. As you can see, my repeaters is at a level 1 of the upgrade of the reforge. And because I spent a hundred aether sparks, I got one extra aether heart. One aether heart. To be able to get this, you need a hundred aether sparks. If you're wondering how I got 231 Aether Hearts, that's because the developers give one Aether Heart for each weapon and armor that had been ranked up to a plus 15 in the previous version of the game. That's how I was able to get 231. Right now the repeaters are back at level 1 now, but you can see I've reforged it once. Why you want to reforge? Reforging weapons will give you a chance as you can see, I just now reforged a repeater, which means I can give it an extra 1.5% movement speed of an upgrade. I can give it more passives 
because I reforged it. Reforging each of the weapon type will let you unlock all the passive stuff that will really help you in higher level behemoth hunts. And you can see the chain blades, war pike and strikers has not been reforged yet. And they are still at level 20. If I reforge this now, for example, chain blades. Once that is done, it's going to do an animation. On the left side, you can see Aether Heart. I got one Aether Heart for 100 Aether Sparks. And boom! I just now reforged my chain blades. Once you reforge your weapons, it'll send that particular weapon type. Doesn't matter which weapon you're using. But the weapon type, you can see chain blades down to level 1 again. Meaning you can reach a weapon to level 20 by doing combat and killing behemoths. It'll take you a lot of grinding. But they've made it easier this time because they've changed how you hunt. You can hunt a lot of behemoths in a single hunt. You don't have to worry about joining a random team at a random time. You can jump in at any time to any hunt and there'll be a selected number of slayers already in the hunt and you will be fighting with them uh, against behemoths pretty much. And you can stay in the hunt even after killing one behemoth, two behemoths, three behemoths. You can stay forever if you want. You can keep ranking up your weapon type all the way to 20 and then you can choose to get out of the hunt if you want to. Or if you want to get out, you can get out. It doesn't affect the other players in the group. The other players are going to be continuing with the hunt. They don't have to worry about you. But if you are invited by a host or if you are hosting a group, please make sure you talk it out with them before leaving them because it kind of might mess with that group. But if it's a random public joining that you did, it won't matter to the other players. They'll be doing their own thing. You can do your own thing. You can join. You can leave at any time of point in the game. Or point of time in the game. But anyways, that's the basic idea of the reforging. That will help you get higher level passives towards the end game. And at the beginning, you will be unlocking your mods and all those. This is mainly for the new players. You can understand for the new players, this is important. By unlocking these things from your blacksmith, you will be giving your weapons a bit more power, a bit more crit chance. Similarly to your armors, you can see you'll be giving it a bit more health increase on the chest piece. For the helmet, you'll be spending again combat merits. Combat merits are awarded at the end of the hunt, at the end of completing a bounty token challenge or at the end of some certain quests and tasks. So hopefully you guys understood this. I, I tried as much as possible to keep it as simple. Uh, but if you have any questions and if you feel like I missed out something, please do let me know. I'll try to explain it in the comments. Right now I'm going to go to the most easiest one, level 1 to 2. Because my weapon level is at 1 or 2, as you can see. You can go to the higher level too, but it'll take a long time to kill the behemoth. So now, we're gonna do an example gameplay as to... See, okay, check this out. When I point at the most difficult level of a hunt, which requires 17 or 20 of a weapon level, you can see the ones that have level 20 are in green. The ones that are at level 1, because I reforged them and they went back down to a level 1, they are marked as red, which means they are weak. If you think you can trick your group, don't think that. Because your group members are able to see this particular level of weapon once you join the group. Now, I'm going to start this easy one right now. You will also see the changes that are made for the hunts. Anyone and everyone can join in the middle of a hunt. Who knows, right now I could be joining a hunt which is actually started. Check it out. And as you can see already, there is no airship anymore that you have to go to and see random players. I'm starting off in an island right now. That's my hunt arrival. And bam. I think I'm probably the first one here. I don't see anyone here yet. 
I don't see any names. Which means, check it out, someone just joined randomly. See? You don't have to worry about who's joining the group or who's joining the hunt. All you need to know is you can stay in the hunt for a long time and you can hunt. I don't know why this player went down but I'm gonna help. Ow. So yeah, this is what you need to do. Also you should know there are going to be other behemoths too that we have to kind of wait and spawn. You can play many number of behemoths in a single hunt now. You just have to finish off the one you're fighting first. There we go, I finished off this one. And I got a decent amount of XP from 260, I went up to 360. Now I'm following this player in front of me. Leaving combat area, going to the next combat area. Where we should have another behemoth pop up. Come on, where are you? Just wait for a bit. And there we go. It's here. So this is what you can do now pretty much. You can stay in the hunt for a long time. Fight more number of behemoths depending on the level you are at. Or the weapon type and what level it's at. See we finished off this one very quickly. I am using an ice weapon so it's more faster against a blazing behemoth. And now I move towards this side. And uh, I can just keep doing this hunt over and over again. And you can see I'm getting a little bit of XP every time I finish off the particular behemoth. You can also go exploring on the island while others are still fighting the behemoth. But right now I'm concentrating on getting weapon experience points as you can see nice hit and check it out I'm gonna reach level 3 soon on my sword there we go I got plus 95 and level 3 of the sword reached. It will also do a little bit of an effect right now. And let me know that I'm at level 3 of my sword. There we go. But you can see there's a 1 at the below number 3, right? That one is how many times you've reforged the weapon, pretty much. And here we go. We have another one. So this is how you kind of rank up your weapon slowly. You can go for higher level behemoths to get better XP if I'm not wrong. I'm only doing this as an example. I don't know how much XP you will get for higher level behemoths. And as you can see, the more you level up your weapons, the more points it's going to grow in that is required to rank it up to the next level. So before it was 100 points, then it was 300, 500. Now I need 700 points. So I have to wait until I get 700 XP to get to level 4. Or you can go to the next hunt. Or you can just press escape. You can go to return to Ramsgate. Yes. You can choose to continue, explore the island. Or you can get back. Right now check this out. I have unlocked my glider. So I wanted to show you guys the glider. I have 20 seconds before I go depart to... There we go. I have a glider. Look at that, it depends on the stamina of a glider too. So, boom. Three seconds. And I, because I chose to go, I was thrown out. So yeah, pretty much you can stay in the fight. And instead of me, someone else will join at this point of stage in the hunt. And uh, they've made the hunt actually better. It feels like you can stay in the hunt. This is a new way of hunting. Stay as long as you want and earn as much XP as you want. If you want higher XP, choose a higher level behemoth fight. Right now I'm at level 3. I can go to level 2 to level 4. Uh, do let me know if uh, I missed out on anything. Please let me know in the comments. 
I would like to catch up on those information as well. But yeah, all in all, new hunt pass. You already saw the showcase at the beginning. Then we have the new reforging techniques, the new slayer path, and the new way of gliding in the game. I don't know if you can glide here. Nope, you can't glide in Ramsgate, so it's only on islands. And a new way of leveling your weapons. Anyways, that's about it. Thanks again for watching. That's the hunt pass, and I don't know why Honest Oz is still here. Give me those ears, Slayer. What do you have? Ooh! Oh, look at that! You get free helmets! I don't know what you need to do for this, but get your free helmets. This is a bonus information I didn't check. Get your free helmets. It's okay, I'm kind of confused. I don't know what I just did. I don't even know what I just picked up. Uh, okay. And other than this, there are also other quests that I have to do. And maybe you have to do. So you do that on your own. This was just a brief explanation of the new things in the game. And also a showcase of the hunt pass. And I'm done for the video. And hopefully I did a decent job explaining it. Please do give it a like if you did kind of uh, understand what I try to explain. And I'm done. So yeah, please stay safe. Always keep smiling. And uh, yeah, I'm done. I'm done. I've tried my best to explain it. Hopefully I didn't mess it up. See you guys. Thank you for watching.